Hey everybody, welcome back to The Stuff of Legend. My name is D'Lo and I've got another video for you guys. Today I'm going to be covering Marvel teasing John Krasinski as Mr. Fantastic and we're going to be discovering how, where, um, and why I think this is happening. There is a series in the comics right now called War of the Realms. It involves the Nine Realms coming to Earth and they're going to be invading specifically New York and all of Asgard, Midgard, Niflheim, all of the different realms are going to be flooding into our world and specifically New York where most of Marvel's main heroes are. I haven't read the series. I want to get this series. I haven't gotten it just yet. If you guys have read it, let me know. New York is getting flooded. This is the premise of the comic. It's not a spoiler. It's not a secret. That's the whole idea. This involves almost every single character we know in Marvel coming into play and having to fight to defend Earth. And so in this scenario, there is an interesting art piece you can see behind me right now where Mr. Fantastic is one of the individuals who has to fight to save New York. And this is interesting because the face that was drawn by the artist, I believe it was Russell Dowderman. It looks exactly like John Krasinski. So I'm going to get into this. I'm going to show you guys an article that's going to talk about this. And then I'm going to discuss why I think this is valid because Marvel uses the comics to foreshadow things that are to come. And we've seen this in the past. We will see this again. Let me go ahead and show you guys. This is the War of the Realms logo. The Dark Elf Malekith wages a war that is spread from one otherworldly realm to the next, setting them all ablaze. And now that it's time for that war to finally explode into the last realm standing, which is ours. That's what I just told you. Um, it's really, it's a really great idea. I'm really excited to read this. But what's more exciting to me is seeing what is to come. All right, so I'm gonna jump ahead to the article by comicbook.com. This is the title here. Mr. Fantastic now looks like John Krasinski in Marvel Comics. And this is very accurate. So there's a picture below. I'll show you in just one second. I'm going to read here. It's always interesting to observe the interplay between Marvel Comics and Marvel movies. Since the 2000s, when Marvel movies had become big business at the box office, we've seen more and more of the narratives and character designs from the films being imported onto the comic book page. This also, by the way, quick note, this also includes Nick Fury being drawn as an African-American for the first time, but not just any African-American, specifically Samuel L. Jackson. And then at the end of Iron Man, we see Nick Fury showing up, played by Samuel L. Jackson, to announce that he is starting the Avengers Initiative. This is really important because the comics often elude to what is coming in the films. Let's continue on. The latest case in point is Fantastic Four leader Reed Richards, aka Mr. Fantastic who has recently gotten an artistic makeover. If you open the pages of Marvel's War of the Realms number three, you will see that Reed Richards now looks just like The Office and A Quiet Place star, John Krasinski. So take a look at this image for me, guys. This is basically the gist of what my entire video is right here, is that we take a look at the artistry that has just been drawn in War of the Realms, which is the newest, biggest push for Marvel Comics right now. It is the biggest comic book event they've done in a long, long time. And this is what they're all about right now. They made video trailers for this comic series. You can watch them online, on YouTube, on Twitter, on Instagram. But this is, this is it. This is the future right now. And we're looking at this image drawn and it is, in fact, undeniably John Krasinski. The only difference I see here between the two is that the art drawn for this Mr. Fantastic has kind of a point on the hairline. That's basically the only difference I see. The facial hair lining is the same. Um, obviously, John Krasinski doesn't have the white streak here on the side, but that's iconic to the character. It's not iconic to any live actors. The hair is almost the same. I mean, obviously, you'd grow it a little bit, but... That's, that's nothing to deter us from looking. Even look at the ear, please. Pay, pay quick attention to the ear. The ear looks the same, guys. Holy dang. Everything about this looks like John Krasinski. Face shape, head shape, nose shape, eyebrows even. Um, except for I think the eyebrows look a little bit closer on, uh, on the art. But frankly, that's just because he's a little bit more intense. He's in he's mid combat in this image here. And John Krasinski in the picture is obviously not. If you take a look at that image, very clearly, this is based off of John Krasinski. It's undeniable. So if you look down here, comic book pit, 
says on Twitter, is it just me or did Russell Dodderman cast John Krasinski as Mr. Fantastic in War of the Realms issue three? Then a billion hashtags and we go down even further. It looks here by uh, a Danny DeVito, not the actor. Um, it says, is it just me or is Marvel trying to make Mr. Fantastic in War of the Realms look like John Krasinski in response to fan casting? And the answer to that is absolutely yes. I have done fan casting on my channel showing you guys that this is something not only that I think should happen, but in the fan casting summit, the final result of 20 guys all pitched their votes and their ideas and the number one most wanted individual cast for this role for Mr. Fantastic was in fact John Krasinski. It's not just me. It's not just you. It's most people want John Krasinski to be this. And there is no way in Niflheim that Marvel has not noticed the fans want John Krasinski for this role. This is really important. This is really cool to see that not just Marvel has recognized this, not just the comics, but through history, we see that the comics often foreshadow the actual realities we see in the movies. So I'm going to go out on a limb and suggest that because most people want John Krasinski to play Mr. Fantastic and Marvel does try to please their fans as much as possible. And because we've seen in the comics, in this comic specifically, that John Krasinski has been artistically inserted into the Marvel Universe as Mr. Fantastic, I'm going to go ahead and say that Marvel has got their eye on John Krasinski to play Mr. Fantastic. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Do you guys think that this is in fact foreshadowing or this is just playful teasing on the part of the artist Russell Dodderman? Teasing the fans, knowing that we would pay attention to this. Let me know what you guys think down below. So let me go ahead and back up what I'm suggesting to you guys about Marvel's foreshadowing and the history that has been in play for some time. So you guys remember specifically with the Fantastic Four that there was not only a Fox character banned from the video games, it was the first time in history, Marvel vs. Capcom Ultimate, I believe it was called, there was no Fox characters, no X-Men and no Fantastic Four. That means no Wolverine, no Magneto, no Storm, none of that. So all of those characters which were being withheld from Marvel and withheld from the MCU, which is where Marvel makes most of their money now, that was no longer permitted in comics and it was no longer permitted in video games because Marvel was trying to choke out Fox because anytime they promoted those characters, Fox was making money. It was something that was not creating revenue as much for Marvel as it was for Fox and Fox was not willing to play ball with them like Sony has been with Spider-Man. So in that respect, Marvel said, you know what? You don't want to play ball with the movies? Forget about it. We're not going to play ball and help support your cause when you try to make movies. We're going to choke you out by not telling our fans anything about the Fantastic Four or the X-Men until you have lost the rights, which didn't end up happening because Disney ended up buying Fox out entirely. So that was a huge play on Disney's part, and they ended up getting those characters back that wasn't the only reason they bought fox obviously but it was a part of why they bought fox so a small part but a part nonetheless now on a quick google search you can see here i'm gonna go ahead and pull this down for you i typed marvel comics stops printing fantastic four you can see i've clicked on the top uh, article up here right there and it's by bleedingcool.com haven't really been to this site prior to this research, but this supports the case that I've seen before in other articles like here, Hollywood Reporter, Marvel.com, Slash Film, Washington Post. I just happened to click on the top one, which I will share for you guys right now. So here, history of why Marvel Comics didn't publish the Fantastic Four for three years. This is a fact. I'm just sharing with you guys what happened and I'm sharing with you from this article here. Tom Brevoort replied with concerns that this was to do with Fox having Fantastic Four film rights. And he says, I, 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 you guys with your magic mind reading helmets, sometimes the cover is just a cover, you know? Note that he didn't deny it, but tried to distract. Fox had bought film and live action TV rights to the Fantastic Four, Daredevil, and the X-Men as part of Marvel's emergence from bankruptcy. And they were able to renew them in perpetuity if they kept using them so if they keep making these movies if they keep making these garbage fantastic four films then they can hold the rights and keep doing that in the future well obviously disney just bought fox so we know that, that has come to an end thank god
odd. But now we have this. On the back of that, we were told Marvel was going to cancel its Fantastic Four comics, and it was at the time publishing two of them. We were told the characters will still appear, but in other folks' books, such as in Humans and Avengers. Note that they started pushing in humans at this time, which was not really a thing because they didn't have the X-Men and the Avengers. Obviously, it was always big, but in the absence of the Fantastic Four, they needed another superhero team. So they were pushing in humans and Avengers hard because they didn't have X-Men. They gave us in humans, and which was a fail on the TV screen. They didn't put a lot of effort into that but it's okay we're gonna get the x-men in the next like five years anyway and they pushed avengers obviously because avengers are sick but then also because there's no other like superhero family team that they could push at the time so they cut fantastic four and they slowed down big time to try to push in humans in the wake of not having the x-men in the films and then we continue and that artwork featuring the Fantastic Four is even being taken down at the company offices. That's a big move. That's that's a statement right there. That's a statement to the world saying we are not going to support the Fantastic Four until they are back, their movie rights are back home with Marvel. And that the belief inside the higher echelons of Marvel is that promoting these properties in comics only benefits Fox's movies at the expense of those from Marvel Studios, which is why the Inhumans are being pushed as mutant replacements in the Marvel Universe and Marvel have been pushing Avengers, Guardians of the Galaxy and other comics over the X-Men and while X-Men comics remain solid sellers, they are no longer the focus of internal promotion unless, as with the upcoming Axis event, the Avengers get equal billing. The game was on for more details and more details came flooding in. Specifically, this was a direct order by Marvel Chair Ike Perlmutter, who has since stepped down. After a particularly fruitless meeting with Fox executives over the future of Fantastic Four rights and that they didn't want to give any publicity, however small, to Fox over X-Men and the Fantastic Four. Canceling the X-Men comics would be too much, but they were to be sidelined and all licensing and publicity was to be canceled. And the, for the Fantastic Four, the comics would be canceled as well. So basically, X-Men was just simply too lucrative. They weren't going to cancel it. They were just going to slow it down. And there was going to be no involvement with the video games. And the comics were definitely going to slow down unless it was like a mutual Avengers get to benefit from the X-Men. And then for the Fantastic Four, they just said, nope, sorry. It's not making enough in the comics anymore. So... There's no reason to have the Fantastic Four. They're just going to cut it off. So there's no publicity for Fox to enjoy or appreciate or earn anything out of. So they were just going to choke them out, basically. Tom Brevoort said, It is amazing how many of you guys asked some version of this question this morning. And I can hear Rich counting the nickels from your page clicks. <laughs> for sure. Again, not denying it. And then we started to get the physical evidence that something was up. A sketch card artist who works Marvel characters told us, he says this, I do a number of sketch card projects for Upper Deck, the cards, and Rittenhouse using Marvel characters. The most recent projects from both companies, one billed as Marvel 75th anniversary, gave specific guidelines to not use any Fantastic Four characters or supporting cast such as Doctor Doom, Galactus, Surfer, Skrulls, etc. And we had the letter to run on with further details to come. They have a link here to that as well, but I think you guys are getting the gist. So this is basically what's happening here. I'm going to go ahead and pull up another page really quick. This one, this article is by Cinema Blend, and it says how Nick Fury ended up looking like and being played by Samuel L. Jackson. This one, pretty cool. So it says Robert Downey Jr. arguably is the current face of Marvel Cinematic Universe. He's the glue holding the Avengers together, and he might be the force that also drives them apart. But it was Samuel L. Jackson approaching Downey's Tony Stark in Iron Man end credits who got this MCU underway. And the story of how his on-screen characterization came to pass is very fun if you haven't heard it yet. So, the gist is this. Comic book writer Mark Miller is the one responsible for turning S.H.I.E.L.D. director Nick Fury black after him being Caucasian for decades and making him look like Samuel L. Jackson in the front pages of the Ultimate books. Miller recently told Business Insider that he modeled his Fury after Colin Powell and envisioned him as a black exploitation hero, as Miller recalls. So then here's the quote from Miller. Sam is famously the coolest man alive and both myself and artist Brian Hitch just liberally use him without asking any kind of permission. 
you have to remember this was 2001 when we were putting this together. The idea that this might become a movie seemed preposterous, as Marvel was just climbing out of bankruptcy at the time. Obviously, however, Marvel did get into the movie business, and it was time to bring Nick Fury as the recruiter of Earth's Mightiest Heroes. Jackson, as it turned out, was an avid comic reader and was very familiar with the work that Miller had done. It indirectly led to his hiring for Iron Man and his involvement in all phases of the MCU. So as Miller remembers it, he recently got to hang out with Jackson on the set of Kingsman The Secret Service, yet another adaptation of a Miller story. The writer jokingly apologized for completely exploiting the actor's image and likeness for a character and asked if he was annoyed, to which Jackson perfectly responded, F no man, thanks for the nine picture deal. The last thing I wanted to share was a little bit of old news. This came last year, April 2nd in 2018, but John Krasinski had said in an interview that he would be willing to play Mr. Fantastic. And this is what probably largely led to the explosion of the fan casting of him playing Mr. Fantastic. He said here, John Krasinski tells us he would love to star in a reboot of Fantastic Four. The actor director recently sat down with Screen Rant to discuss his latest film, A Quiet Place, a horror film set to release April 6th that he directed and co-starred alongside his wife, Emily Blunt, who is also a fan favorite to play Susan Storm, The Invisible Woman. A Quiet Place represents the first time the couple has worked together on screen in live action. They voice characters together in Animal Crackers, but in recent months, they have been among the most popular pair fan cast to take over the roles of Reed Richards, Mr. Fantastic, and Sue Richards. The Invisible Woman in the inevitable Marvel Studios Fantastic Four franchise reboot, once the recent Disney 21st Century Fox merger is finalized, which now the deal is actually finalized, so this portion is history, and now we are in what was at the time a future. The deal was finalized, so now we move on to this next portion. During our interview, we asked Krasinski about working with his wife on the Fantastic Four should the opportunity rise. Screen Rant says, a lot of our fans at Screen Rant love the superhero stuff. You and Emily have both flirted with this for a little bit. Any chance that you guys could be playing the Invisible Woman and Mr. Fantastic? John Krasinski says, oh yeah, the Fantastic Four? I would love that. I mean, listen, I'm still getting into the whole superhero thing. I didn't read comics as a kid, not as many. I read some, but not as much. But I'm a huge superhero fan, so yeah, I'd love to do something like that. If there are any left, a lot of these have been taken, but the ones that are left, yeah, I would love to do something like that. And listen, I'd love to work with her again, so any chance I got would be great. Referring to his wife, Emily Blunt. And then it goes on to mention that he actually auditioned for Captain America the First Avenger, but he lost it to Chris Evans. This was something that, a bummer for him, but he is interested to play superheroes and specifically said he would be totally down to play Mr. Fantastic and he would love to play Mr. Fantastic side by side with his wife playing Invisible Woman. That would be really cool. And that's something we've discussed here on the channel and I know you guys have thought about as well. So let me know down in the comments if you guys think this is not only plausible, but again, if you guys think that this art here in War of the Realms indicates to us that we are going to get a John Krasinski, Mr. Fantastic. So let me know what you guys think down below. Does the War of the Realms and the past history of Marvel in the comics alluding to future possibilities with certain actors and also the, the chokehold of the Fantastic Four being lifted from the comics and possibly the video games. I've made a video about Marvel's Ultimate Alliance 3 coming out and how Fox characters have been included in that game. So the ban has obviously been lifted since the Disney Fox merger has gone through. So let me know if you guys think that I built a solid case for why this indicates Mr. Fantastic will be played by John Krasinski, or if you guys think I'm totally nuts and this is crazy and it's a stupid theory. So you guys be the judge. You tell me down in the comments what you guys think. And again, share this video with a friend. Make sure to smash that like button if you like this video. And also be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And please turn on notifications so that you guys can be alerted right away when I go live next time. That way you guys can be a part of the video. You can chat with me in the comments and you won't miss a single thing. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. You guys stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legend.
Hey guys, D-Lo here. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And remember to share this video with all of your nerd friends. I know you got them, and you know who they are. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about this discussion. Let me know what you would like to see me do a video on next. Subscribe to the channel because you're a legend, and we have that in common. Also, be sure to turn on notifications to be notified right away when I upload my next video or so that you can be alerted when I go live next time. That way you'll never miss a thing. Check out the other videos on the channel so that we can have a discussion on all your favorite movies and TV topics. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legend.